Hey guys, John Jr. here, bringing you guys another APA video, this time for week 10 against Vivid and his South Texas Sableyes. Be sure to check him out in the description below. He will be the first thing right below the timestamp to when the match actually starts if you want to skip to that. So before we get into this, I do want to go ahead and say a couple of things. First of all, this has big playoff indications. We are currently 4 and 5. I believe he is also 4 and 5. He might be 3 and 6. I don't know either way. Uh, but basically, we need this win to kind of keep us alive in the playoff race. Another thing is I've honestly already recorded this match, but I wasn't happy with how it turned out, or at least I recorded the team builder but I wasn't really happy with how it turned out or how enthusiastic I was. I wasn't very enthusiastic. I've been exhausted this week. I've been doing so much and I've still got so much to do. But I'm going to bring you guys a nice energetic video here. With that being said, I want to thank you guys again for all of your support. It is unreal. And I want to shout a couple of guys out real quick. I want to go ahead and shout out Sir Jorge, Sir George the Great. Uh, he makes some phenomenal content, some phenomenal thumbnails. I will be sure to link him down in the description below. If I do not, then he will probably comment on this video and I will probably pin it in less vivid comments on this video another thing is starting week 10 actually it's this week isn't it the starting this week owen will be in the apa obo 29 seattle sandstorm my best friend will be taking over for gym leader geo which is absolutely amazing I'm glad to see owen get this chance and i want you guys to please go show him some love please go show him some support but with all that being said let's go ahead and get to this team builder so looking at Vivid's team, Vivid has Zara Aura, Tapu Bulu, Hydreigon, Metagross, Keldeo, Chandelure, Mega Pidgeot, Seismitoad, Garboder, Piloswine, and Sarina. So looking at the team, the first thing that I noticed is Zara Aura completely destroys us. All it needs is Stabs plus HP Fire and Ice Punch, or Fire Punch and HP Ice, whichever the two it gets. And it's a very, very scary Pokemon for us to deal with, especially because of its speed tier. It is free to run Modest or Adamant with Life Orb, which is super, super scary. Mega Pidgeot is another mod that we really struggle with because of our speed tiers. Our fastest mod that's not named the Sogor is going to be Salazzle. So Mega Pidgeot is free to come with uh, Hurricane as well as Heat Wave and then probably HP Ice. I would assume that hits the Rhyperior as well as the Zygarde and then maybe like Sub, maybe Roof, something like that. I really think Hydreigon is going to come maybe as a Scarf variant, maybe as a Specs variant, uh, maybe Sub Select, Z Belch. There's a lot of different ways that I could see Hydreigon coming this game. But I think the most likely is probably like Sub Salak or Z Belch, one of the two. I feel like that definitely has a good matchup. The next Mon, Serena, has definitely got to come. It's got to be our Zygarde answer, and I really feel like it could do a lot of work and put a lot of pressure on our Zygarde this game. The last two mods were really open for interpretation. I put Piloswine and Metagross on the layout. I also think Seismitoad is very, very likely. The other mods I don't really see coming. Keldeo, we have the best Keldeo check in the game, Infinity, I would say. Tapu Bulu, I don't really see coming when I have Salazzle right there, and he'd have to run Scarf, and he can't really touch us anyway without Stone Edge. And if he locks into Stone Edge, then we get to set up on Zygarde, or with Zygarde, for free and then Garboder doesn't make a lot of sense when we have Zygarde so I don't really see the other mods coming and those are the six technically seven that I really see him bringing I also forgot Chandelure. Chandelure gets hardwalled by Snorlax, so I really don't see it coming. Anyway, moving on to the team and why we are bringing what we are bringing. The first mod we have here is Kurt the Salazzle, Kurt the Buzzswole. We have Fire Blast, Sludge Wave, Hidden Power, Grass, and Encore. We're rocking that Eject button. Our dual stabs are unresisted besides Seismitoad, which we have HP Grass for. And I was really tempted on the last move there with a lot of different things. There was Flame Charge at one point, Nasty Plow at one point. But I decided Encore is really, really cool because he has two mods that outspeed the Salazzo as long as they are not Scarf. And the other mods can be Encored into something and either knock us out or hit us and use our Eject button and get us into Zygarde in which we can Dragon Dance on whatever we Encored them into, which is phenomenal. So we can basically pick and choose what we Encore things into and that will allow us to get free Dragon Dances with the Zygarde, which is so cool, which is so cool. We have enough speed to outspeed everything we can. We are a rock friendly number of HP, pretty standard stuff. Next up, we have Big Owen, we have Curse, Recycle, Body Slam, Earthquake, Rock and Gluttony, Figgy, Berry. Uh, we have enough Spadef to take, I believe, two Specs, Modest, Fire Blast from the Chandelure, and then enough Defense to take one Close Combat from the Life Orb, Zera, after Rocks. I think, I don't know if that's Investor or Uninvested, but that's what I remember. Uh, we have Curse, just to set up, potentially, it's not our first option, but it is there. Uh, Recycle, obviously, for our Figgy, Berry, and then Body Slam is Unresisted, minus the Chandelure and the Metagross, which are both weak to Earthquake. So, pretty easy set for me here I thought it was pretty obvious and maybe he thinks it's obvious too but I think the Snorlax set can definitely put in a lot of work next up here we have Tapu Fini Athena 
I decided when I first saw this mod, okay, we're gonna rock with Choice Scarf, but I saw a set that did a little bit better. We have enough speed to outspeed the Adamant Metagross and Serena, and then we have Sub Calm Mind Surf Moonblast, obviously with the, um, the leftovers there. We rock with enough defense to not get uh, killed by Zera Life Orb, no attack investment, Plasma Fist, I do believe, and then we have enough Spadef to not let Shandy break our sub, if not Specs, at plus one with Shadow Ball. So really, really cool set. We can get this mod in, we can set up on something like Shandy, we can set up on something like Seismitoad, and we can really put in a lot of work. As long as like Zara's dead, or um, what's the other mod, Tapu Boo, as long as those mods are dead, we should be fine. Next up here we do have Russ. Russ's dual stabs are pretty unresisted. The only things that really beat Russ are going to be the Chandelure, because he is faster than us, as well as the Mega Pidgeot, which is obviously faster than us and can blow us back with a Hurricane. U-Turn is there to get big damage off on the inevitable Hydreigon switch in, and then we have Light Screen for the obvious switches into the Hydreigon as well as the Mega Pidgeot and even the potential Zara if he does decide to be AV uh, because that helps us with uh, like Zygarde taking HP Ices or just other mods taking both switches and I really really like this set. Rock friendly number of HP. We have enough defense to take two Adamant Meteor Mashes from the Metagross which is really random but we didn't really have a check to Metagross other than that and that's the set that we're rocking with. Next up here we have the big man himself Shuckle King the Zygarde 50, Dragon Dance 1000 Wave, Sludge Wave, Outrage. We are, or a thousand arrows, excuse me. We are rocking with Sludge Wave in order to deal with the Bulu as well as the Serena to an extent, both of which can kind of wall the Zygarde to an extent. Uh, Z Outrage because his resist is top of Bulu and we can kill that with Sludge Wave, obviously. Dragon Dance to get our speed to plus one. We can outspeed Zera at plus one. And we have enough, I want to say enough Spadef to live one Life Orb uninvested HPIs from the, the Zera, I want to say, or maybe it's max investment, I'm not sure. Enough special attack to guarantee Oko Bulu with Sludge Wave, and then the rest in attack adamant, and we are going to rock with this set. And then lastly, here we are rocking Choice Scarf Arrowhead, the Archaeops here with Earthquake, Stone Edge, Stealth Rock, Endeavor. Endeavor to not make us useless after we get put into Defeatus inevitably. Uh, Earthquake for the Metagross as well as the Zera. It actually Oko's the Zera because we are adamant. Stone Edge because it only is resisted by, I believe, the Seismitoad and the Metagross. And then we have Rocks because Rocks don't do horrible against him. Ro late game Rocks could be cool, especially because we are Choice Scarf. Um, if we see the opportunity to click them, we will. We have enough speed to outspeed Zara with our Choice Scarf, and I absolutely love this set. This set could be a late game win comp, which is really, really cool depending on how we play, uh, but we don't have Defog, so I'm not really relying on it. I'm kind of relying to switch this thing in over and over, get it low, and then eventually click Endeavor on a Pokemon that would otherwise be super tough to break. With all that being said, that's going to be the squad that we are rocking with this week, guys. Let me know what you guys think of this squad down below and if there's anything that you would have brought. But with all that being said, I will see you guys in just one second. Okay, guys, so we are going up against Vivid here, and you can see... He brought basically what we expected. The four mods that I definitely thought were coming did come, and then Seismitoad did come, so that made sense. And then Chandelure did come, which surprised me, but did not catch me off guard because we did bring that Snorlax. So, going into this matchup, I don't know if I talked about this in the team builder, but Archaeops was going to be my dedicated lead. I really wanted to catch the Zera off guard. We had like an 80% chance to Oko with Earthquake if he was like 4 or 20 or something HP, and I really wanted to get the Zera out of the way early because that was the biggest threat to my team. So, I was going to lead. Archaeops, I knew in my mind his other lead was either Scarf High Dragon or Seismitoad. If he led Scarf High Dragon, I was going to go ahead and go into Finny, and if he led Seismitoad, I was going to go ahead and go into Finny. So basically, I was leading Archaeops. If he led Zera, I clicked EQ. If he led Mega Pidgeot, I clicked Stone Edge. If he led Chandelure, I clicked Stone Edge. If he led one of the other three mons that I switched out accordingly, if he led Serena, then probably into Salazzo. If he led one of the other two, then into Finny. So that was basically my game plan going in. So we are going to go ahead and... Let me go ahead and do that. There we go. We are going to go ahead and lead Archaeops going in here. My ears are ringing. That, that's weird. But we're going to get challenged by Vivid here as he is going to end up leading with the Dindra, which is going to be the Seismitoad there. Really cool shiny. My two favorite colors, actually. And we are going to go ahead and lead with Arrowhead, like I said. Uh, kind of halfway wish we had U-Turn. Doesn't really matter. It would have just been some nice chip. Uh, but we are going to go ahead and hard switch into Finny, like I said. Kind of expected this. And at this point, if you watch the team builder, you know that I'm sub set up Finny, sub calm, mind, dual stab. And I figured this might have been a good time to start setting up. I didn't know what he could hit me with. He hits me with Scald, and I know that, that that's going to do like no damage. And he can't get a burn because we're in terrain. We're going to get leftovers recovery. And we're basically going to be sitting at full. And we're going to be sitting in a position to where I'm like, okay, we're going to set up a sub and see how this works. But he's going to go ahead and go for Sludge Wave. He's going to not only outspeed us, but he's going to click Sludge Wave and do significantly less than I 
expected from Seismic Toad. This Seismic Toad has disappointed me. But that told me that he was a very good amount of offensive investment, maybe about 200 offensive investment, 156, somewhere around there. So I decided, okay, we're going to go ahead and click Calm Mind because after uh, one Calm Mind, it's a roll to break my sub. So I'm like, okay, well, we're going to go ahead and risk this. We're going to go ahead and click Calm Mind uh, and then try to get behind a sub and hope that he doesn't break our sub. So we're going to go ahead and click Calm Mind here. Like I said, I thought this was a fine position. We two-shot because he is obviously offensive with Moonblast, which is really, really cool at plus one. We did like min 54, I think, or something like that. So I was fine with this. Um... He is going to go ahead and click Sludge Wave again here, as I don't remember if we clicked Sub or if I clicked Moonblast, trying not to just uh, get a little bit too greedy there. So he does about 25%. It would have been close on whether or not he broke the Sub. I wouldn't have thought he broke the Sub, but I didn't want to risk that. I go ahead and go for Moonblast. I didn't want to risk not having enough HP to click the Sub, and I think I ended up having enough HP to click the Sub. But we're going to get a special attack drop there, which is phenomenal, and I wish when he had any form of recovery so I could click it here and be in a great position, but we don't. So I'm just going to have to kind of hope that we can um click moonblast and i would i could have clicked sub there and that would have been a free sub he clicks rocks that would have been crazy if i would have got a sub up i almost did i'm not even gonna lie i, I expected him to switch halfway but we're gonna go ahead and click moonblast here and we are gonna pick up the ko on this seismitoad here uh which is phenomenal he has the freest switch into zara in his life and at this point it was like okay what do I switch into this Pokemon? This Pokemon is scary. This Pokemon is the biggest threat on the team. I really wish that I had an answer to this Zara Aura, uh, but I don't. But I don't. So I'm going to go ahead and switch out here, and I believe I end up switching into the Decidueye. This was my best play. He wasn't going to click HP Fire or Fire Punch or whatever there, so I felt like it was pretty safe. And uh, he is going to go ahead and go for the Plasma Fist, which has a really, really cool animation, by the way. Absolutely. Just such a cool animation. It's claws come out and everything. That's super cool. That's super cool, bro, but it does nothing, because we're a Decidueye, and of course it does nothing. So, uh, at this point, I was like, okay, so we might die to a Fire Punch. He's not Life Orb, so I don't think so, so we're just going to stay in, and we're going to go ahead and go, I think, for a Light Screen, uh, just in case to help set, to help Zygarde, like, get a thousand arrows off right there or something. But he's going to go ahead and go into High Dragon, which I was fine with. I'm going to go ahead and get this Light Screen off, so it worked out for me in the end there. Uh, as we do have U-turn for this High Dragon, I was fine with taking a hit, uh, especially because we are behind light screen. I expected him to want to U-turn here, to be completely honest, but he's just going to go ahead and click Dark Pulse, which is absolutely fine by me. And I could have just went into Snorlax, I guess, and not taken that damage, but it's okay. I'm going to go U-turn, and we're going to do a good chunk, maybe about 35-40% to that High Dragon, uh, as I am just going to go ahead and go to Big Owen, which is going to be our Snorlax there. And I really wanted to click Earthquake here on the switch into Chandelure, but I didn't want to risk anything. So so I might have clicked Curse. I don't remember. We're going to find out. He sends in Moth, which is going to be the Lamp, which is such a good nickname, by the way. But I might have clicked Body Slam. No, I'm going to go ahead and click Curse. Curse was this pretty zero downside play unless he had like Z Superpower, which I didn't really expect uh, just for the Snorlax. So uh, we are going to go ahead and get that Curse up. And this is fine because Snorlax is my answer to Chandelure, which is absolutely fine. But he's going to go ahead and go for the Toxic, which sucks because I kind of wish I went into Finny on that. But it is what it is, I guess. Um... Because obviously he wasn't going to click anything besides like Fire Blast or something. But I'm going to go ahead and click Earthquake. And this is, should kill this Chandelure 100% of the time. He lives on like one. <laughs> Unfortunately. He lives on one. It doesn't end up mattering at all. But I really want to know what his HP investment was. Because I, I EV'd that to always kill Chandelure. Uh, which I might have not said in the team builder, but we always Oko Chandelure at plus one if no HP investment. So we had to be some amount of HP investment, and we might have got cucked on the roll. But he's going to go ahead and go into the uh, Serena there, as I'm going to go ahead and just go for Earthquake again. It didn't really matter. I figured he was probably going to go into Serena, but I had an okay switch. What was my switch in, actually? Salazzle? I had an okay switch in Salazzle because he couldn't really risk too much. He could knock off, uh, I guess, but I didn't really, I, I didn't know what he wanted to do here. But, and we were eject button, so that was a little bit risky, but I think what I ended up doing was sacking off Decidueye here actually because we didn't really need Decidueye he couldn't switch in on the Zara Aura again I lied we went ahead and sacked off the Finny because we never outsped anything on his team my bad. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense, actually, now that I'm looking at it. We, we end up sacking the Finny because, obviously, we can't outspeed anything on his team. We don't have any, um, what is it called, any form of recovery besides leftovers. So I went ahead and sacked Finny, and he went straight for Power Whip. If we clicked Body Slam there, then his Zygarde check was at, like, 20%, and our, our, we could have switched out Snorlax, no problem. But 
because uh, we did have Figgy Berry. So that would have actually been a really, really cool play, and I'm kind of regretting that. But I'm going to go ahead and go into Kurt the Salazzle here, as this mod puts on so much offensive pressure on this man. I'm going to go ahead and click Sludge Wave, expecting him to go into Chandelure, either getting the Flash Fire boost or sacking it off, and it made a lot of sense. He is going to go ahead and go into that mod, and I am just going to go ahead and click Sludge Wave and pick up the KO here on Moth the Lamp. Uh, which is really cool, and, I, and again, he just has a free switch into either Zara Aura or into the Mega Pidgeot, which both of them put on a lot of offensive pressure, but he's going to go into Messiah, which is going to be that Mega Pidgeot, which is such a fun mod, man, such a fun mod. I'm going to go ahead and sack off Decidueye here, because I realize that Decidueye does not have a purpose anymore, the only thing out speeds is maybe the Serena, maybe, depending on his speed spread, um... But unlikely, I think we have like four speed anyway. So I was like, whatever, we're gonna let Decidueye go. We're never gonna get a click another button with Decidueye. It does not matter. He can have this Pokemon. So he's gonna Mega there, and obviously, he is going to click Hurricane and be able to KO our boy Russ here. Uh, it would have been really scary if he was sub, actually. That would have been a problem if he was sub low key. Like sub HP Ice Heat Wave. I don't know. He doesn't even need Heat Wave. Anyway, I go ahead and go to Archeops here because I'm like, oh, boys. It's time to click Raw Stone Edge. If he goes Serena, we do about 50%, so it is going to be a two-shot either way. Uh, otherwise, we are going to have the No Guard Stone Edge in our favor here and KO this Mega Pidgeot. So we are going to go ahead and land our Stone Edge because Arrowhead's the GOAT, and he is going to get a crit on that Serena and do about 75% or 80% as opposed to the 50 that we would have normally done. So Arrowhead is the GOAT, ladies and gentlemen. Arrowhead is the best Pokemon. We are going to go ahead and swap out, and we have to be careful because we only have one or two more switch-ins before. Before we have defeated so I'm gonna go ahead and go into Kurt here I was like no way he doesn't click power up here it doesn't make any sense to click anything else so we're gonna get into Salazzo and we get a free fire blast off dude awesome and then I forgot I was eject button <laughs> so I was like oh yeah my uh, my secret prep it didn't work for me it actually worked against me this week that would have been the freest fire blast of my life but I'm gonna go ahead and do what I plan to do with the eject button and actually go into Desire because at plus one it's looking like we KO this Pokemon with like uh, Z or it, it, we always KO this mom with Z Outrage and it's looking like if he's not Scarf High Dragon we win this game at plus one which is phenomenal we are going to go ahead and Dragon Dance there and his Serena is going to go ahead and go for Power Whip which is going to do about 50% to us a little bit under 50% but it is about 50% to us enough to make it to where I'm like okay I don't want to risk the crit I don't want to risk the Dragon Dance again I very well easily could have and if I click Dragon Dance again I might have won the game but I didn't want to risk that crit. So I'm going to go ahead and go for the Z at Drake here. As we are going to be able to take down this arena. At this point in the match, if he is Scarf High the Dragon, he does not lose. If he is uh, Scarf High the Dragon, then we still have a game on our hands. So I'm going to go ahead and go for the Z Drake. Uh, I could have clicked Sludge Wave. It was a roll to kill depending on if he was Spadef or Fizzdef. And it would have been really cool to click Sludge Wave with Zygarde in a, a Wi-Fi match. But I didn't want to risk it. I figured, okay, we're just going to click Z Drake here. He has three Pokemon la left. If he does not send out High the Dragon, we're going to lock into Outrage and win the game. Otherwise, we are going to have to switch out into Snorlax and see what happens here. So he does go uh, into the High the Dragon. I feel like we can still use Zygarde. So I'm going to go ahead and switch out as and go into Snorlax because Snorlax is a dedicated answer to this High the Dragon. As he is going to go ahead and go for the Draco, revealing that he was probably Scarf. He couldn't really risk anything else because he lost the game if we stayed in there. He does a ton of damage, and that damage actually makes me think that he specs, but it was just like, I th it might have been like Scarf Modest High Roll. I'm not even sure. It did way more damage than I expected, but we're just going to go ahead and get that Figgy Berry there. Uh, I do believe I clicked Recycle here. I don't believe there was any point in clicking anything except Recycle. I do believe. He's going to go ahead and go out into Zera Aura, which was a very, very scary Pokemon for us to deal with. I might have clicked Earthquake. I do click Earthquake, expecting the Zera Aura. What a man I am. Clicking Earthquake on a Hydreigon. What a man I am. But he does turn out to be Shooka, which is absolutely fine. I kind of, like, that was kind of expected, but I'm really surprised no Life Orb, to be completely honest. But we are going to take some Poison Damage there. And now on Switching, if we had our Figgy, we could munch on it. But we don't have our Figgy. We're going to have to find a turn to click Recycle. So I'm going to go ahead and sack off our boy Kurt, our Salah here he does not have a purpose anymore uh, unfortunately Kurt and he's gonna go ahead and show low kick and we we resist that but Salazzo is still gonna die so that's really really cool and at this point I think that I can go into the Zygarde once more if he doesn't he's not life orb HP ice and he actually never KOs us unless he's modest because he's not life orb just based on the, the damage calcs and things like that he never KOs us with the uh, HP ice even the low kick doesn't KO us which is awesome so we're gonna go ahead and click dragon dance here I'm really interested on what his set was actually because I didn't expect low kick at all 
But we are going to go ahead and Dragon Dance here, and we are at plus one once more, and I'm able to just click Thousand Arrows and basically guarantee a KO. Actually, I might have clicked Outrage to guarantee a KO. I do not remember. Or maybe Thousand Arrows into Outrage. Yeah, I clicked Thousand Arrows into Outrage. So I'm going to go ahead and smack this uh, Mega Pidgeot to the ground, uh, which does not matter at all, obviously. But uh, at this point, I'm like, okay, if I, I, could, I cannot tell if he's Specs High Dragon or Scarf High Dragon, if he's just really good at bluffing the Scarf. So I'm going to go ahead and click Outrage. If he's not Scarf, we win the game. Otherwise, we sack our uh, Zygarde, and then we get a free switch into Snorlax in order to click the Recycle on the High Dragon. So I was really confident in that. Uh, he is going to go ahead and go for the Dark Pulse and be able to KO our Zygarde, which is fine. He did turn out to be Scarf, and uh, blocking into Dark Pulse was a really, really good play over anything else. But I'm going to go ahead and go into Snorlax. As long as we don't get flinch, we're going to get Recycle off, and we are going to get that Figgy Berry back up to about 60 70%-ish. And he is going to go for Dark Pulse, and he does like zero to us. That might be a 2 KO. It looks like it is after Toxic, obviously, Dudge on. But we're going to go ahead and get that Figgy Berry and munch on that Figgy Berry. No flinch there was phenomenal. If we flinch there, we lost the game, I'm pretty sure. Um, and depending on his speed investment, because obviously we're Scarf uh, Archeops. But now we're at a good amount of HP to where I feel safe clicking Body Slam. If we land two Body Slams, we kill this High Dragon. And then we are in a position for our boy Archeops to win with uh, Earthquake on the... Uh, let me let me pause here on the Zara Aura, but we do get a para here, and the para definitely sucks. It definitely sucks. But if we landed two body slams and we didn't get parried here either way, we killed the High Dragon either way, and we could have killed the um, the Zara Aura with uh, with Stone Edge or not, the Zara Aura with Earthquake. But let me show you guys something. He's going to go ahead and click Dark Pulse here. All I wanted was to click Body Slam to be able to kill this High Dragon to make it easy for my. Um, my Archeops in the back here, but as you were going to find out, we clicked Recycle. I wanted to get a little bit more longevity. I could have just clicked Body Slam. It didn't really matter because I died to Dark Pulse into Poison into yada yada yada. It didn't matter. I should have clicked Body Slam there. It doesn't matter though. Uh, he is going to go ahead and click Dark Pulse again. At this point, I was, I mean, I guess it does matter. I was risking the fl flinch chance, chance as I, we do get flinched, and this definitely sucks. We, li we live at 8% or 8 HP. This definitely sucks, and honestly, the flinch sucked more than the para, in my opinion, uh, because, because, if we just landed the two body slams, we killed the high dragon, no problem, we were in a fine position. I would have rather done that than para the high dragon, to be completely honest, because this put us in a position to where Archeops has to land two stone edges in order to win the game. We always killed the Zera Aura from the range it's at, it's at about, uh, 75, 70-ish percent, we always KO the Zera Aura, we're adamant. But because we flinched, we have to land two stone edges. He's parried, which is phenomenal. It's good on our part because he is slower than our Archeops, so we are lucky in that sense. But def that, that flinch definitely sucked because it put us in a position to where we have to hit two stone edges in a row, and Archeops has to be the GOAT here. Archeops, Arrowhead has to pull through. We played Archeops super well. He's not in Defeatus range. He's 1 HP above Defeatus, which is phenomenal. Arrowhead's going to come in here, and he is looking goofy as ever, ready to click some stone edges. Edges. We're gonna click Stone Edge. We're gonna land. We're gonna land the first one. That is a dead High Dragon, which is phenomenal. Should have been dead already, but I clicked Recycle for no reason over Body Slam. Stupid John. I know. He's gonna go ahead and send in Zara Aura, and at this point, I didn't know if he was expecting Scarf or not. So we just have to land one Stone Edge. Cross your fingers, guys. We just have to land one Stone Edge, and he's like I said, he's at about 70-ish percent. So we always KO this Zara unless he's ridiculously bulky, like max HP bulky. We always kill this Zara. We just have to land a Stone Edge. And we connect the Stone Edge, which is phenomenal. We get a crit. The crit did not matter at all. The crit didn't matter at all. But we get a we just, we land the Stone Edge and Arrowhead, our wacky, goofy Archeops, is the hero this game, which is phenomenal. So GG to Vivid. That para definitely did suck, but I think the flinch put us in it. Like, if the flinch didn't happen, we were in a, an RA position. And, like, the flinch was 20%, the para was 30%. So you can't really be too mad about that. I don't think so, at least. So GG to Vivid. Make sure to check him out down below. With that, we are going to move on to 5-5, five and five, which is absolutely phenomenal. We are still very much in this playoff race, and we face Envy and Nate in these last two weeks. We need to win at least one, and I think we make playoffs. If not, then I want to win two. I want to win both of them. That'd be phenomenal. Going seven and five would be phenomenal uh, because that's kind of... I expect every... For every loss, I expect two wins normally, but we haven't done that this season, obviously. So, again, GG to Vivid. Be sure to check him out down below. Next week is going to be Envy and his Unmega Ampharos, and that's going to be a lot of fun. But thank you guys so much for watching. And for now, guys, this has been John Jr. Signing off.